and welcome back to the second half of chapter 4x. Boy, this part here is a real doozy, just like the start of the chapter. For starters, the soldiers here aren't just equipped with javelins, they also have long lances, which are pretty equivalent to steel lances in this game. They slow them down a lot, but man do those things hurt. And the slowing down doesn't even matter, because most of these soldiers have zero speed to begin with. I mean, holy cow, Fergus has one HP and he got hit twice from full health. What the crap is that? Adding to this is the uncertainty factor in that bishop there. He's got an L fire tone, which means he can pretty much decide to kill any unit he wants if they've already lost half their health. But most of the time he's usually content with just healing someone, but, well, you never know. Oh crap, that guy killed Fergus. We have to restart the chapter. Oh. Oh, right. Yeah, enemies don't just capture your units that have no weapons just for the hell of it. They'll also try to just capture your units that they can. And, like I've stated earlier, that armor now has just stolen every item Fergus had, and if I want him back, I'm gonna have to capture the armor myself. Boy, I... This part, I was almost... I almost hit the reset button instinctively. And then this happened. I thought Seti was almost going to go over and kill the armor, but thankfully Master Seti Dono is an extremely smart individual that really connects with the player, and he instead goes for the dangerous bishop. Although, this doesn't mean that I don't get his psychic staff, but I'd rather have that happen than have to restart this chapter. So, thank you Master Seti Dono for the hand there. This will help a lot. Thankfully, because the armor is holding one of my guys, it halves all of his stats except for HP and luck, which allows Dashin to easily take this guy out. Although, if I had missed both of these hits, he probably would have killed Dashin in return, and then I really would have had to restart this chapter. But, I think the game had mercy on me after my 11 repeated resets, so it gave me this one. But thankfully, that's basically the last difficult portion of this particular chapter. Like I said, pretty short, but two really hard segments. There's a couple more enemies in the room to the left, which contains a couple chests, but they're relatively easy to take out. In case you're wondering how I'm trying to take these guys out like a schizophrenic mess, it's because I'm very hesitant to put anyone against the wall on the left, because there's a Thunder Mage in the other room, and I don't want to have them take a pot shot at me. I really should not have done this and just had someone stand to the left of Leaf and risk taking a thunder shot, but I really didn't want to do that for some reason, so I'm actually having Fergus attack the soldier that could probably easily kill him in a counterattack, but oh man, I don't know what the hell I was thinking here, but thank god I didn't have to restart this chapter. Woo, thanks buddy. I'm leveling up Fergus quite a bit during this part of the game, and to be honest, I re should really stop doing that. I tend to use him more because I value him more than Brighton and I want him to get more stats, but I should really hold off until a couple chapters to really start power leveling him, because then I'll get more Crusader Scrolls and you'll get better stat ups, but I'm really short-sighted when it comes to this game. I don't really plan out in advance, because if you try to plan anything out in this game, it's just going to backfire spectacularly. That's just my experience of though. I really need to take that armor out, because if I don't, he's probably just going to kill Dosh and force me to restart this chapter. Except, for some reason, I was considering just letting it happen, because I didn't want to use up a use on Asshole's Graph Caliber Tome, but... I gotta re keep reminding myself, this is Thracia776, you don't got time for second guessing like that. But, it didn't work anyway, but... I don't... I mean, obviously he didn't end up killing him, because this is the run I'm using for this recording. Lord Seti, Karen, what are you doing here? You left Celestia? 
Yes, to look for you. To look for me? Did he send you, or was it my mother? Lord well, Seti, I have something very important to tell you. Who? What is it? Well, oh, Karen, what is it? Crying isn't helping. The queen, she, mother? Did she? Yes. It's been two months already. I see. So, mother died. Lord Seti, I was too late. I, I wanted her to see father just once more. Lord Seti, please return with me to Celestia. Lady Fee is waiting for you. Fee, how is she doing? Is she alright? She tries hard to hold back her tears in front of the others, but she cries and cries when she's alone with me. You're so cruel, Lord Seti. You push everything on little Lady Fee and go off running to a place like this. It's natural to be called a hero when you take after Whole City, but you're letting that get to your head, abandoning your mother and sister. And you call yourself the Prince of Celestia, Karen. You're right. But my father was the only one who could cure my mother's illness. Even if I stayed by her side, there was nothing I could do except watch her fade away. That's why I wanted to find my father no matter what. Then what are you doing in Manster? I heard my father was here up until half a year ago, but when I arrived, he had already left. But after seeing the terrible state of the people here, I just couldn't leave them. I see. Forgive me, Lord Seti. I was harsh. Karen, can you give me a little more time? I'll return to Celestia once I drive Rydrick out of the city. It shouldn't take long. I just need another half a year. Then I shall stay here with you. I appreciate your concern, but I can't fight with you around. I want you to go back to Celestia. Yes, I would just be in the way, wouldn't I? Okay, I shall go back home. Please promise me that you'll come back as well, Lord Seti. Yes, I swear to you that I'll return. Here, I'll give you this as a symbol of our promise. What is this, a rag? That's a national treasure of Celestia. It's an old scroll left by the holy warrior Seti, and it has magical powers. I'm really supposed to give it to my pride, but I'll give it to you for now. I... I can't accept such a valuable item. Karen, I'm sorry about my mother. I'm also grateful that you took care of Fee for me. This is a symbol of my gratitude. Please take it. Very well, but I'm only taking it for the time being. I'll be sure to give it back once you return to Celestia. Karen, we'll meet again in Celestia. Take care of yourself until then. You too, Lord Seti. And here we get the Seti scroll. Probably the second or third best Crusader scroll in the game. For the cost of 10% HP growth, the Seti scroll boosts your magic growth by 10%, but more importantly, your speed growth by a whopping 30%. Damn. This is like the thing that can make Dawshin viable as a unit if you decide to use him past this part of the game. And I usually have him hold it during this part just for the extra speed, although to be honest, it would probably be better suited going on Brighton or Fergus. Hey, doesn't that mage there look somewhat different than usual? Yeah, that's a female mage. Isn't that something? Thracia 776, to my knowledge, is the only game where female enemies appear that are not bosses, but just regular units, and not just female varieties of the same unit, like, say, Troubadours or Pegasus Knights. No. In other games, say, ma mages would always appear male unless they were bosses, but in here, look, there's a female Thunder Mage, not a boss, just a regular enemy. That is just... I don't know, it's simple, but... It really makes sense when you think about it. I mean, why don't they do that more often in these games? But yeah, that's just something really unique that this game does that no other Fire Emblem has. So there's another point for Thracia. Normally, I would just have Leafus steal the Mage of Thunder Tome, but there's another enemy that we can't see in there, and it's an axe armor holding a devil axe. Yeah, regular enemies can hold those in this game. And just like in other Fire Emblem games, the Double Axe is, well, a double-edged axe. <laughs> no pun intended. It's extremely powerful, but it's also very heavy and ac inaccurate in this game. But there's a chance, based on your luck, if it's too low, that instead of dealing damage to your enemy, it deals damage to you. And in an earlier run on this chapter that I had to restart, the Axe Armor actually pretty much killed himself 
because he went for a crit on one of my guys and did all the damage to himself and killed himself. In fact, if you search for it on YouTube, there's a funny video of someone attacking a wall in Fire Emblem 7, and they used a Devil Axe and ended up hitting themselves and killing themselves. Yeah. Watch someone get killed by a wall. It's absolutely hilarious. But it didn't matter, because the AI was kind of, uh, duh, and instead of moving the Thunder Mage first and allowing the Axe Armor to attack, it moves the Axe Armor first, which means that the Thunder Mage has to move out of the way afterwards, giving me a free chance to take this guy out. And I really need to. I thought about trying to capture the armor, but to be honest, the Devil Axe... Boy, you don't need that many things working against you in this game. I don't want that thing anywhere near any of my guys. So I just have Fergus go over there and take him out with the Armor Slayer. I didn't really worry about him counterattacking because I was sure this thing was going to hit and it was going to kill him in one hit anyway. And that's every enemy in this chapter. Eventually, a couple soldier reinforcements will appear near the bottom, but if that does happen, Master Seti Dono, because he's an omniscient god, immediately knows where they are and just goes down south and murders the crap out of them. So I'm just going to open all these chests and get out of here. Uh, just to save time, I'll tell you that one of the chests has the Brave Sword, one of them has a Life Ring, and the other has an Iron Claymore, which I will probably never use for about five chapters. So I'm just going to speed the rest of this up and get the hell out of here. I'll see you guys next in Chapter 5, and this has been Model Omega, and thank you for watching.